In the following video, I'm going to show you how I made this lidded box. Okay, the grain lines up very nicely. Um, it's got a slight suction fit. There's the top, there's the bottom. And I'm going to show you some tricks that might help you along the way in, in making such a project. So stay tuned. Thank you very much. I hope I put film in the camera. I'm roughing my box blank down now with the spindle roughing gouge. I am now forming the tenons with a beating and parting tool. Okay, I have my box mounted in my Powermatic lathe. I'm going to do a little bit of shaping on the outside of my box. This will be the bottom, this will be the top. Um, I'm going to use my smaller spindle roughing gouge. This is one of my favorite tools. I got this out of Packard Woodworks. And uh, let's just do a little bit of shaping on this. I'm turning about 2,000 RPMs. Okay, we're looking at the box at a different angle. This is going to be the top, and I'm going to do just a little bit of profile on the upper part of the, my, <clears throat> my box. Now I'm very close to my chuck, so I'm trying to be careful not to, not to ruin the, uh, the edge of my tool. I can clean this up a little bit later. Now I'm going to mark the transition between the, the lid of my box and the bottom. Okay, I'm following that golden mean guideline of two-thirds and one-third. Approximately this is going to be the joint of my box. I'm going to show you something that uh, I sometimes do when I'm making a lidded box. I've got a beading and parting tool that's got my own uh, grind on that. I can only use this tool in this position. It's not going to cut upside down. So let me just uh, make this cut and I'll explain what I'm going to do. Okay, I parted in, oh, probably three-eighths of an inch or so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark this juncture right here. 
Okay, then I'm going to part this off. And this is going to give me my spigot for the bottom of my box. And it's also going to mark the, the lid where I need to make my recess for that spigot. And I'm going to put a nice heavy pencil line on this. I'm going to take this parting tool and go ahead and part this off at this point. Okay, I have my lid parted off. This is my lid, this is the base. There's the tenon that I'll use later on to make the join of this project. And here you can see the pencil line I drew on there before I parted it off. Um, if you're not sure about this, make sure that you uh, size your tenon or your spigot and make sure that uh, you don't make, make the female recess too large or it won't fit your tenon. So I'm going to go ahead and hollow this out and I'm going to use a, a couple methods. On the lid, which is only about an inch and a half uh, or so deep, I'm going to just use a scraper and hollow this out. When I do the, the bottom of the box, I'll use a spindle gouge and show you that method. I'm going to slow my speed down a little bit. I was turning about 2000 RPM. So I've got it at about 1500. I'm going to take a square end scraper and, uh, and clean up my recess for my spigot. Now what I'm doing, I'm sighting down this tool and sliding along my bedways to make sure that I'm parallel. I'm going to just clean up the shoulder a little bit. I don't need my pencil line anymore. So here's my base. Here's my lid. And I've still got a little bit of room. I can uh, turn this down just a little bit and fit this very accurately. I'm going to go ahead now and finish the inside of my box. One of those areas that's pretty tricky to get to is that little little pimple right there. So if you go right below it and lower your tool handle and swing your tool around. I'm going to make a little design on the inside of this. I'm going to do a little bit of sanding and I'm going to finish this. Okay, yeah, I've got the inside of my box sanded to about 1500 grit. I'm going to put a little bit of a detail on the inside of this and I'm going to put some finish on it. Now with my lathe off, I'm going to apply some uh, shellac. And this is actually just some shellac flakes I've mixed up. It's important you finish the inside of your lid at this point because you can't go back and do it later. I'm going to buff that just a little bit. Okay, you can see the taper on my tenon. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to very gently put the lid over the, the base. Turn my lathe off. And I'm going to zoom in on this. 
And you can see the burn mark. That is the exact dimension that I need to make for my lid to fit properly. I'm not going to complete this at this time. I'm going to go ahead and hollow uh, the inside of my base because if I throw this off center and I have this completed, I may have a problem later on making that fit properly. Okay, I've got my base chucked up into my lathe and I'm going to drill a hole. I'm going to show you another method of hollowing end grain. Okay, remember the, <clears throat> the grain is going in this direction. So what we have to do is get into the center of this and cut outward, not, not in towards the end grain because that makes a difficult cut and a not very good surface. So with my point tool, I'm going to establish a little recess from my, my drill. I'm going to turn my lathe down just a little bit. I've got a little, oh, it's probably a quarter inch drill bit and a block of wood. And I'm going to dimension this. I'm going to drill to the bottom of my, of my box. Okay. I've got my depth hole established, and that does a couple things. Of course, it establishes how far I need to hollow uh, the base of my box. It also eliminates that very center part in that end grain, which is very difficult to begin a cut in. So I'm going to use a spindle gouge, and I'm going to go from the center outward, and as best as I can, I'm going to cut across the grain. Looking at, looking at my tool head on, I've got it about 45 degrees and I'm cutting with, with the lower wing of my tool. Okay, if I turn that too much open like that, I'm gonna get a catch. So I've got that rolled over, oh, probably more than 45 degrees. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm, I'm right at the very bottom of my depth hole, so I don't need to go much farther with my spindle gouge. And I'm gonna clean this up with a scraper in just a second. Okay, I've got a scraper, and I've got a profile on, on this, which allows me to get fairly well into the very bottom of my box, so. I'm going to go ahead and scrape this. When you're doing an end grain box, you're usually going to have to finish it up with a scraper. And if you have a little bit of a burr on there, that's going to give you more of a cutting edge. Now I'm trying to give you a little bit better view head on into the, the hollowing process for the bottom of my box. And I'm going to try to stay out of the way. Be careful about sticking your finger in there. You do it at your own risk. And if the opening is, is too small, you can get your finger caught in there. I've selected another scraper. And it's got a very flat part right here that's going to uh, allow me to, to true up the left side of my, uh, my recess. Now I back my camera off quite a bit here because I want you to see the position I'm holding my tool in. Okay, when I'm doing something like this, like the inside of a box or a, a, a closed form, I'm not looking inside the bowl. Okay, I've got my tool right here and for me to look inside my, my box down here puts my head in a very precarious position if I get a catch. So I'm not going to look inside that. I've done this enough times I can do, do it by feel and I got my arm completely over my tool in case I do get a catch uh, the, the pressure of that catch is going to go up into my arm like a shock absorber I've got this just about completed and all I really have to do is, is feel where the bottom of my box is 
draw my tool up so I can get rid of that little annoying pimple. I'm going to swing my tool around. So there you have the bottom of the box and the lid completed on the inside, sanded and lacquered. Now let's fit the lid to the base. Okay, I have my lid just beginning to fit onto the spigot of the base. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fine tune this and I'm going to use a nice square scraper. Lower my tool rest just a little bit. I've got my burn mark on there and I'm going to use that as a guideline. I'm going to clean up the face of this uh, shoulder. And I'm going to undercut it just a little bit. But I still want to keep my burn mark on there. I still have a little bit of a taper I need to get rid of. I'm trying to get all the little ridges removed from there. Okay, now that's too tight for the operation of that lid, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to jam that on there, okay, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've got enough grain in here that I can see where my lid and my base line up with the grain, so uh, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, profile on this, and I'm going to show you one more trick that I often do when I'm fitting a lid onto a base. Let's say that my lid is loose at this point, but it's okay for my final fit for the project. Um, okay, I've got a bottle of water and a tissue, and I always have water available for whatever reason. I'm gonna wet that down. And I'm gonna put that over the spigot of the base. I'll put my lid back on there and take this excess tissue away. And that's going to help that jam chuck. I find that on a, a lidded box like this I don't really need to bring my tailstock up. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of a final turning on this top part here, blend in the top. I'm going to scrape that just a little bit get rid of that, uh, that tissue. In fact, I think I'll just true this up. It's a little bit out of balance. Okay, I put my camera back into my Skycam so you could see me profile the outside of this box a little bit better. So I've got uh, probably a half inch spindle gouge. This is a Doug Thompson tool and I really like uh, the tools that Doug Thompson makes. He lives in Ohio and uh, let's do a little profiling on this. Get this box done. Now keep in mind this is just jammed on there and I need to be a little bit careful I don't get a catch so I'm going to work my way around trying to make a nice finishing cut on this in case this is as far as I need to go I want to make it acceptable now I'm going to shut the lathe off I'm going to sand this I'm going to finish the lid and I'll reverse it and do my base. Okay, I've got my lid completed. 
I have my little point tool and I'm going to clean up this shoulder just a little bit and fit my lid. My lid is still just a little bit tight, so this is a very good tool to make some very fine cuts with. Okay, I'm going to reverse my, my base, jam chuck it, and we'll finish the very bottom of that and we'll be done. I'm going to cut a lot of this out because you've seen, you've seen me sand and you've seen me profile the outside, so I'll be right back with you. Okay, I've got my lid and my base joined together and I'm very happy with that fit. It's a little bit of a suction fit. So we need to finish the very bottom of our box. And if you remember, when I first did this, I pretty much finished the base of this. I can, I can fine tune that, I can sand it a little bit, but I don't need to make a lot of heavy cuts across there because I'm going to jam this again, jam, make a jam chuck. And when you're doing a jam chuck, the chuck actually needs to be in a softer wood than the project you're using. And that'll form a little bit better to your, uh, your project. And I've got a, a good fit on there. I did that a second ago. So I, all I need to do is, is trim this part off right here, blend it into the tenon, do a little bit of sanding on that, and I'm all done. Okay, now that I've got the outside of my base pretty much uh, where I want it, uh, I can make a little bit more of a finishing cut across the grain in the proper direction. It's going to leave a good finish.